Well, greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to Open Mic here on my YouTube channel. I'm, of course, your host, John Cambia, and it's great to have you here today. This is, of course, the Monday through Friday show where all we do is just talk live. We have live interactive chats the whole time. In the mornings on the John Cambia show, we save a bit of time for some live questions, but then here in the afternoon, it's all we do. Live questions from you guys here on Open Mic. Now, here's how today's going to go. I've got a few questions from this morning's show that were left over that I'm going to address first, and then I'm going to go over to you guys who are watching live and take your live stuff. And we're just a bunch of movie fans around here talking about movies and TV and some stuff. So let's get started. All right. The first stuff that we're going to talk about here today came to us this morning from James Smith, who wrote, what's the latest on the Vince McMahon movie? I don't want to miss it, uh, but I may forget about it as I'm about to stop watching WWE because it sucks now. Yeah, I mean, I only watch WWE like a couple of times a year. Now, I don't recognize 80% of the people in it anymore. I still get a kick out of watching like whether it's, you know, one of the big pay-per-views, WrestleMania, things like that. I'll still get a kick out of watching it with Ann, but I don't watch a whole bunch. Honestly, I haven't heard any movement at all on the Vince McMahon thing. Um, the last I heard, it had stalled a little bit, but it didn't sound... The people I talked to about Vince McMahon told me that the project stalled, but like didn't get derailed. They just said stalled. So I don't know where it is right now. It might be ramped right back up for all I know. But as soon as I hear anything more about a Vince McMahon biopic, I will definitely let you know. All right. Uh, next one comes to us from Haskell who writes, uh, John, unless I'm muted. Uh, okay, first Haskell, you're the one of these guys who constantly writes that to me. Am I muted on Twitter? Why do you keep asking that? Uh, I don't know why people ask me if you're muted on Twitter. Anyway, uh, unless I'm muted on Twitter, I sent you the article on Comcast wanting to buy Sky from Fox, throwing throwing the Disney deal for Fox a major snag. I mean, it could be. Um, that could be a snag, but it's probably just a bump more than a snag. Like, would Fox want to entertain a piece of a deal that kind of throws a much larger deal into question and chaos? Not really sure that would happen, but who knows? I mean, there's a lot of inner workings going on behind the scenes that we just don't know about yet that could, uh, could turn out to cause something, but we'll see. All right, next one comes to us from Alan Gonzalez, who writes, Is it true that Mark Hamill is going to show up in Guardians of the Galaxy 3? No, it is not true. What is true is that Mark Hamill and James Gunn started publicly tweeting back and forth saying, hey, let's get together and chat because we're neighbors. And Mark Hamill said, I'd love to since I'm an unemployed actor and all that kind of stuff. And it's cool. But no, anybody who's telling you right now Mark Hamill is going to be in Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is lying to you. What has happened is just that, you know, somebody said to James Gunn, please put Mark Hamill in it. And he said, wow. And James Gunn said, wow, I should talk to Mark Hamill. And Mark Hamill tweeted back, well, I'm here if you want to talk because I'm unemployed. And they said, come over and let's talk about it. But that's as far as it is right now. It's a couple of people talking. Millions of these conversations happen in Los Angeles every single day. And 1% of them turns out to be something. Now, could Mark Hamill end up in a Guardians of the Galaxy 3? Sure, he could. But as of right now, let's just treat it for what it is. Two guys on Twitter had an open public conversation for about five tweets back and forth, and that was it. I, I think it's a little premature at this point to start running with headlines. Mark Hamill is going to be in Guardians of the Galaxy 3. It's a little, little you know, premature for that. Uh, all right, let's go on to the next thing here. Uh, Jesse Savage writes, Did you hear about Kendrick Lamar, about the sequel to Black Panther being a villain? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was this ridiculous story that Kendrick Lamar is saying that he would like to play a villain in uh, Black Panther 2, which is ridiculous. I, I mean, first of all, I love the soundtrack to Black Panther 2. Huge respect for it. Massive, massive, massive. But I do not want Kendrick Lamar, yet another famous person who thinks because they're famous they can be an actor. I don't want Kendrick Lamar acting in the next Black Panther any more than I want Chadwick Boseman to do the soundtrack for Black Panther 2. So, yes, I heard he said he wanted to do that, but that wasn't Ryan Coogler saying he was going to do it. That wasn't Disney saying they were going to do it. So let's just move on from that. Of course, everybody wants to be. Guess what? Here's a new headline. John Campio wants to be in Black Panther 2. There you go. Run that as your headline. Oh, what? Millions of people want to be in Black Panther 2? Okay. So, yeah, I wouldn't read anything into it, and I wouldn't think too much about it. Uh, let's see. Next one comes from Nathan Oswald, who writes... Over or under 60% that The Greatest Showman gets adapted into a stage musical. Uh, I'll take the under. 
I'll take if you're going to set the number that high, I'll take the under on. It's certainly possible. They're always looking for material to turn into stage things, but if you're going to set the number as high as 60, I'll take the slightly under on that. And then finally, Samantha Elliott writes. Um, let's see, what is Samantha saying? Um there it is. Samantha Elliott says, I love Marvel and could never really get into DC. But like you said um, yesterday, if you say superhero, Superman is always the first in mind. What do you think makes him so iconic, even to someone who has never really read slash seen much of him? I think it's just the iconic nature of what Superman is and what he represents. You know, when you think about Superman... The, the first saying that comes to mind is truth, justice, the American way. For so many generations, Superman stood as the pillar of everything that was good and right about us as a people, right? He was kind of the um, avatar, if you will, for the highest ideals that we as a people had. At least there, were, there was an era and there were times that he stood for that and he represented that. And eventually when it became cool to have dark heroes, when it became cool to have, you know, bad heroes, when it became cool, when it became lame to just be a good guy, um, then Superman kind of fell out of favor a little bit. But we've been seeing a resurgence of an appreciation for what it is he represents, because now everybody is dark and twisted. Every hero now is dark and twisted. And it's like, Superman is now kind of like the exception. There's something about him just because he's the representation of those ideals. And, and on top of that, that he's the most powerful of superheroes. There's that too. So I think those are the things that really kind of uh, lend their, themselves to making him as iconic as he is. And why people like you and me, when we think superhero, the first thing we think of is the red cape. I mean, that's what we think of. And I think that's probably what is the cause of that. But I'm sure you guys have other opinions about that as well, but why is Superman that iconic to us when we think of a superhero? Jump in the comments section, let me know what you guys think. Okay, with that out of the way, now let's get over to your live questions. For, the, the, <laughs> for those of you who are watching live right now, let's get into it. And the first thing we've got here comes to us from uh, Adam. And Adam writes, uh, three billboards. Over or under 3.5 Oscar wins. It has seven nominations, editing, original score, original screenplay, supporting actor, uh, two supporting actors, leading actress, best picture. Whoo, over or under three and a half on that. Because here's the ones that are very realistic. Best lead actress, I believe we're going to see it win, take best lead actress. I think Frances McDormand has a really good chance of winning that. Best supporting actor. I think either Woody Harrelson... Um, or, uh, um, why am I forgetting his name? Um, anyway, Sam, either, either, uh, Woody Harrelson or I want to say Sam for, guys, help me out here. The, 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 the actor in, uh, and why may Sam Rockwell, that that's it. Sorry, you guys, your answer didn't come up yet because of the 30 second delay, but Sam Rockwell has a very good shot. So there's two, it, it could very possibly win best original screenplay is another one that has a real shot at winning. And Best Picture is one that has a real shot at winning. I think it's got a real shot at four. The likelihood that it takes all of those, I'm not so sure, so I will take the under on your three and a half. I think it might walk away with three. I think it may walk away with three, so I'll take the under on your three and a half. Really good question, Adam. All right, Degato one writes... Have you seen the trailer for Fahrenheit 451? What's up with Michael B. Jordan wanting to turn to to burn everything? Uh, I did see it. Michael Shannon looks great in it, and he sounds great in it. I it's an interesting thing because I remember Fahrenheit 451 was a book that we had to read when I was in school, and I have a hard time imagining it as a movie. And I got to say, even after watching the trailer, I still have a hard time imagining it as a movie. That sounds weird, I know. But even after watching the trailer, I have a hard time imagining Fahrenheit 451 as a movie. So I'm not quite sure that the trailer did its job. But you're right, it is kind of weird seeing him in there in that kind of a role. All right, uh, Kelix writes, What are your thoughts on the Irishman budget ballooning to $140 million plus million, even with extensive CGI to make De Niro younger? I think it's ridiculous. I mean, hey, look... it. Yeah, everybody knows, while, while a lot of people are very excited about The Irishman, and I'm very curious to see it, I have had my doubts and reservations about this movie from the beginning, mainly because so many studios passed on it. 
And if you're passing on a movie by Martin Scorsese with Robert De Niro and, you know, all these people in it, there's got to be something wrong. And I keep hearing now about these things going wrong with it. So if the budget really is that high, you're right, it is too much. I've got a feeling there are some executives kicking themselves. But who knows? At the end of the day, it's still Martin Scorsese. So regardless of whatever the problems, who passed on this, what's going wrong now, the budget ballooning to this, despite all of that, at the end of the day, it's still Marty Scorsese. Which means we could be in for something really special, or it could be a train wreck, you never know. So, but I, I've, like from the beginning, I've had my doubts about this thing, and everybody looks at me strange when I say I have my doubts about The Irishman, but I just keep hearing all this stuff going on with it. But we'll just have to wait and see. Maybe it'll be well worth it. Maybe we'll watch it and we'll think this was worth $140 million, or maybe we won't. We'll just have to wait and see. Uh, let's see. John uh, Johan Aglin writes, Hey, John, been a fan since you started that other place. Well, thank you so much. Signed up for Patreon today. Oh, great. Well, thank you so much, Johan. I appreciate that. Um, how do I get involved in the Facebook group? Well, if you just signed up today, you will be getting a notification that gives you a whole bunch of instructions about, you know, different things you can do, including how you get plugged into the Facebook group. So keep your eyes open for that. That will be coming today sometime or early tomorrow. Just keep your eyes open. Uh, and thanks so much for becoming a Patreon supporter, Johan. I appreciate that. Um... Let's see. Orange Hand writes, One of my mom's uh, friends would literally melt if she met Idris Elba, but then wouldn't we all? What's your favorite Idris Elba performance? Uh, my favorite Idris Elba performance. I mean, there's a part of me that is obviously a little bit, you know, the whole comic book movie thing. That's obviously a big thing. Um, there's that... Uh, 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 I was going to say No Country for Old Men. Not No Country for Old Men. Um, Beast of No Nation. Beast of No Nation is is a huge one that obviously I think everybody loves him in a whole hell of a lot. So there's Beast of No Nation. Um, what's another great one? Oh my gosh, Molly's Game. Molly's Game, which was just in theaters this year. It is Molly's Game and Idris Elba is no small part of this. Molly's Game was my second favorite movie of the year. It ended up being my second favorite movie of the year. And that is saying something because there are so many movies. There were so many great movies this past year. And I think it ended up being my second favorite one. Uh, another one with Idris Elba. Well, the TV show, um, The Wire. I mean, if you, I know that's not a movie. But if you're going to talk about Idris Elba and you're going to talk about some of your favorite performances by, by him as an actor, you've got to talk about The Wire. There are still a lot of people today that consider The Wire to maybe be the greatest television show of all time. Now, I did some posting about this uh, a while ago. I never watched The Wire when it was popular and when it was on TV and stuff like that. So I got caught up recently watching The Wire so I could start watching it, so I could try to figure out and understand what it is everybody's talking about, what they're so excited about. And while I don't agree that it's the greatest show of all time, it's damn good. And one of the reasons it's so good is uh, this guy, Idris Elba. I've had a chance to actually meet and talk to Idris Elba a few times. And uh, Idris Elba is pretty damn great. And he's very eloquent and he's very personable. You know, some of these actors, sometimes you meet them and you understand because they're very busy and they've done a million of these interviews. But sometimes you meet these actors and they're, they come across as a little dismissive, even though I don't hold that against them because they're, they're just thinking about the next thing they got to do. And I understand that. But talking to Idris Elba, it's really neat. He makes you feel like you are the focus of his attention. I've always really appreciated that. And I think anybody that uh, meets him gets to do that. So those would be some of my favorite Idris Elba performances. Uh, let's see. Um, Johan writes, also, I know it's a few months late, but have you seen the trailer to Next World of Warcraft expansion? Would love to hear your thoughts on it. I, if it's my, I don't know. I don't know if the last thing I saw from World of Warcraft and when the, the trailer would have been. So even though we're talking months and months and months, I, I don't know. So I don't know if I've seen the expansion trailer or not. Uh, Andy A. Hernandez writes, have you watched, uh, have you watched Wonder? Your thoughts? Yes, I did watch Wonder. It's, it's a, it's a great movie. I didn't like it as, you've heard me say this a bunch, but I didn't quite like it as much as some, because some people just thought it was like everything. I liked it very much. I think it's a very, very good film. 
I'm not like it should have been nominated for best picture or anything like that. Julia Roberts was great in it, but, um, but I thought it was very good. I thought it was a really sharp movie. Uh, Sulti writes, has Black Panther broke even yet? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crossed over $700 million. It broke even, I think on its third day. I think Black Panther broke even on its third day in theater. So yes, it is. It is Black Panther is already well into profitability for Marvel. Uh, let's see. D.L. Lesta writes, do you agree the Black Panther's fight scenes looked much better in Civil War than Black Panther? I watched Civil War again after seeing Black Panther three times. Um, yeah, 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 I'll agree with that. Not that I thought the Black Panther scenes in Black Panther, the fight scenes look bad, other than that falling through the chasm CGI fighting going on. That didn't look great. But like a lot of the stuff in South Korea looked really fantastic, all that kind of stuff. So it's not putting that down. But the Black Panther fight scenes in Civil War were crazy good. Like really crazy good. So while I am not disparaging the fight scenes in Black Panther, I will agree with you that the Black Panther fight scenes looked even better in Civil War. And that's not putting either down, but, but I agree with you. I thought they were just a notch better in Civil War. Uh, Killex writes... Crazy that it's the 50th anniversary this April of one of my all-time favorites, 2001 A Space Odyssey. Have you ever seen it on the big screen? You know what? I haven't. I haven't seen that on the big screen. And I've never even thought of that fact that I've never seen it on the big screen until you just mentioned it. I mean, there are a few movies I've never had the opportunity to see on the big screen and probably never will. Although, a year or two ago, I had the opportunity to watch one of my all-time favorite films that I thought I would never have a chance to watch on the big screen, which was Lawrence of Arabia. And I got to watch that on the big screen about a year or two ago, and it was like everything I th hoped it would be. I have never seen 2001 on the big screen. I would love to do that sometime. And you know, being living in Los Angeles, I got to believe there's going to be a screening of it now and again. And probably being the 50th anniversary of it, at some point, you got to imagine there's going to be some screenings around. So I'll probably have to make sure I check that out when it happens. Uh, let's see. Uh, ben writes, did you hear baby Groot isn't Groot, but it's Groot's son? Well, I, I haven't heard that specifically, but I have heard, I remember right after the first Guardians of the Galaxy, that the notion that no, Groot died, this is just like a tree drops an acorn, the acorn grows in a new tree. That that twig that they took and planted wasn't Groot himself, but rather a new Groot just a new Groot. Now, I've never heard anybody officially confirm that or not. And I don't know, Ben, if you're talking about something that um, that James Gunn has specifically said, but just my understanding of it has been that this Groot we have now is a different Groot. It's a new Groot. That's been my understanding. So if you guys know anything official, if you could share a link or something like that, that would be great. I would love to know what it is. Uh, let's see. Dakota Barber writes, about to watch Bone Tomahawk. Heard great things. You've heard great things for a reason. And all I'm going to say is prepare yourself for the scene. And if you have not seen Bone Tomahawk, you will know what the scene is when it happens. Just brace yourself. But yeah, it's a great movie. Uh, Chris Martin writes, John, have you seen National Security starring Martin Lawrence and Steve Zahn's hilarious flick? Oh, are we talking about that old one? I think I remember seeing that, but I I don't remember thinking it was funny. Th that is the old one, right? Hold on a second. Let me look this up. Um, where is my mouse? There it is. Uh, I'm going to type in National Security. Um, let's see. Martin... Lord, there we go. Yeah, it was a 2003 film 15 years ago. Yeah, I remember not finding it that funny. I'm, I'm glad you liked it, Chris. I'm glad you're bringing it up for people. But I do not remember liking that movie. Now, it was 15 years ago, and I'm pretty sure I never watched it more than the once. But yeah, I, I didn't find it all that funny, to be honest with you. Uh, Troy Taylor writes... Uh, thoughts on Pacific Rim, Riv Pacific Rim Ri Uprising. Love your show, John. Thank you so much, Troy. I have my doubts about it. Uh, I, I'm just going to tell you right now, I have my doubts about the film. I The trailers have not got me really excited. Um, yeah, I don't know. I honestly don't know how well it's going to perform either. I have a feeling this could be a money loser. This could be a money loser. And I'm not all that excited about it. Now, I'm, gonna, I'm very curious about it. I'll be there the first opportunity I have to watch it for sure. But I got to admit, I trailers haven't done it for me. 
they have not revved my engines at all. So we'll have to see. Uh, KB2 writes, uh, assuming you know how Deadpool killed the Marvel Universe, maybe they can have him kill the X-Men Universe uh, as it is for a low-key reboot in the MCU. No, I don't think so. I don't think that's what they're going to do whatsoever. And remember, it's still not 100% for sure that the X-Men and Aladdin are coming over to the MCU. This deal still has to go through, and until the government clears it, and that could take a year to 18 more months, it may not happen. Like, they could hit a snag. Now, we'll see what happens with that, but if they do move forward, I don't think that's how they'll do it. I, I, I really, it's a little too inside baseball, I think, for comic book fans for that to happen. Uh, Ram just sends in a super chat. Thank you so much, Ram. Uh, let's see, where do we go now? Um, lost my spot. Do, do, do. There we go. Uh, Chris Warden writes, I agree that all film is subjective, especially when it comes to comedy. For instance, I thought Vacation was hilarious and one of my favorite comedies of 2015. And that's great. That's I mean, comedy is by far the most subjective of all things. You can tell a joke, half the people might laugh and half the people won't. Neither of them have the better sense of humor. It's just that joke hit these people one way, that joke hit the others. I was really excited about Vacation. I thought the trailers for Vacation were awesome, and I watched it, and I just wanted to vomit, to be honest with you. I want to gouge my eyes out. I was angry at myself for wasting a night of my life watching that movie. But for you, it worked, and that's a great example of the subjectivity of film. I am not wrong for thinking it's a giant piece of shit. You are not wrong for loving it. It's just how it hit us in different ways. That's the subjectivity of film. So I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm glad you had a great time. For me, it was a car wreck of an experience in some t a couple hours of, of my life I wish I could get back. Uh, Chris Martin uh, follows up. A few other good Martin Lawrence movies, Big Mama's House, the original, and Wild Hogs. You know what? I also did not like uh, Big Mama's House. Didn't like that at all. Wild Hogs, though. I remember I took a little bit of crap for saying, you know what? I didn't think this was all that bad. Wild Hogs, though, is one that will stay on my list. Now, just let me again bring it up here uh, because I think this is the one with John Travolta. Um, let me just make sure it's the wrong one. Tim Allen. It should be Tim Allen and John Travolta were in that. Yeah, yeah, it was Tim Allen, John Travolta, Martin Lawrence, William H. Misa, Ray Liotta, Marissa Tomei. Um, I actually like that movie. And I remember a lot of people were scoffing at me for saying that I liked Wild Hogs, but I did. I got a kick out of Wild Hogs. Um... Let's see. Have you ever seen the film Four Lions? My favorite comedy. Well, if it's the same Four Lions I'm thinking of, um, it's not. Oh, it's not the same film I was thinking of. Oh, no, no, no. I was thinking of a different. I was thinking of the one with. Um, um, I was thinking of the film with. Uh, uh, damn it. Uh, Robert Redford. I think it was Robert Redford in that way. Anyway, I was thinking of a completely different movie. Uh I can't, this is the one with Riz Ahmed. Did I see this? I cannot remember if I've seen it. I cannot remember if I've seen this one. So I, I can't answer that question. Uh, Thrasher305 writes, saw Shawshank Redemption for the first time and agree it should have won versus Forrest Gump for best picture at the Oscars. It was uh, certainly no snub. Love both films. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, first of all, to me, Shawshank Redemption is almost universally acknowledged as one of the greatest films ever made. It's... I I don't know how you make a movie as good as Shawshank Redemption. It's just that good. But again, even though it should have won Best Picture that year, it's tough to call it a snub because snub insinuates that nothing else should have had a chance. And Forrest Gump is a beloved movie. People love Forrest Gump. So Forrest Gump won. I don't think Forrest Gump is as good as Shawshank Redemption, but it's beloved and it's good enough that I don't, I don't call it a snub. Yes, I do believe Shawshank should have won Best Picture over it, but I won't call it a snub because that was a high quality film, very high quality film that ended up winning it. So I got, I mean, I'll whine about it and I'll complain about it, but really at the bottom, at the end of the day, I, I don't, I can't really complain about it too much. Uh, let's see. Kevin... Lane Laniel writes, as a fellow Canadian, I'm proud to say that you, sir, are a great Canadian kid. Well, thank you so much, Kevin. What do you think of the possibility of a Mighty Ducks TV show? Well, I mean, look, if you, 
Anything can be a good TV show or movie. You guys have heard me say that all the time. Any premise could make a good TV or show or movie, depending on what approach you take with it. And, you know, if it's well written and if it's you make endearing characters, then anything could work. I am not excited about the idea of a Mighty Ducks TV show. I don't want a Mighty Ducks TV show, but if they have a great concept for it, they create great characters, and they write it really well, then, you know, songs about Eduardo, the sentient crawling headphones, uh, cousin to um, Felipe, the sentient dancing microphone, of course, then that could be a great TV show. Living, breathing headphones could be a great TV show if it's written well, make good characters, make it endearing, make it entertaining. Anything could work. Mighty Ducks could work. I'm just, I'm not asking for it. That's all. Uh, Jose M. writes, uh, Burnberry Preserve. Prequels, Indy 4, Highlander 2. Um, Burn, Highlander 2, because Highlander 2 is one of the three worst films of all time. Uh, bury the prequels because they're the prequels. Preserve Indy 4. And I say that because of what I say about Indy 4 all the time. I still contend ND4 isn't that bad of a movie. It's a bad Indiana Jones movie, but it's not that bad of a movie. Like I've always said, if you called Kingdom of the Crystal Skull and almost had the exact same movie, but just take out the Indiana Jones thing and say your hero is, you know, um, Francisco the Adventurer, okay? And it was the movie was called Francisco the Adventurer and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull then I think more people walk out going, yeah, that wasn't bad. That wasn't bad. It had some fun to it. It's not so bad. But as an Indiana Jones movie, it totally failed. So I will say out of those three things, I'll preserve the Indy 4 just because I think there's some redeeming qualities to it. Um, Miser G puts in a super chat of a very specific 279. Thank you. Uh, Kellex writes, I love the video questions. Will you bring them back? Yes, I am. My plan is, but I'm not going to bring them back on open mic. Because open mic is meant to be this, supposed to be live questions. What I am going to start doing is integrating video questions into the John Campia show. Like maybe like one a day, uh, maybe two days a week or more or something like that. Um, so I am going to start integrating those into the John Campia show. I've got a few other things I'm going to be integrating. Into the, it's weird. I'm integrating new things into the John Campia show, but I'm shrinking the John Campia show. Like it, John Campia show used to be over an hour long. That was too long. Now I've got it down to about 45 minutes. I want to get it down even more to about 40 minutes or less, but uh, you will be seeing video questions pop back up on the John Campia show. I just need a little time to get that up and running, but thanks for asking about it. Uh, Ram writes, Hey John, um, I'm not what, I'm not quite sure what WRT is. Um, Regard, I would say regarding the literary agent discussion this morning, how hard was it for you to get one for the pride? Full disclosure, it's on my t to read list. Oh, I didn't. I didn't get a literary agent for the pride. I just decided to write it. I just wrote it and then I self-published it through Amazon. That's, that's, that's what I did. I, I didn't bother getting a literary agent. If you want to write a book, that's the thing today. If you want to write a book, nothing is stopping you from writing a book. You can write a book and then you can self-publish it through Amazon, and there's other self-publishing things as well that you can get that done. You can do that. That's easy. Getting into the hands of a studio, that's something completely different. That was a totally separate discussion. But getting a book written, easiest thing in the world. You can just sit down, as long as you got a computer, as long as you got a word processor, and you can type, and you've got internet connection, you can write a book, upload it to Amazon, and start selling books. I mean, you can. It's just that easy. Um... House Heisenberg writes, favorite serious TV show ever. It's Game of Thrones for me. Uh, some people might argue serious, because whenever you get into the fantasy and stuff like that, some people say that's, like, when I think serious, I think, like, real life drama. Like, real life drama. Um, I, favorite serious show of all time. See, that disqualifies, well, I'll go, then I'll go, um, yeah, I'll go Sons of Anarchy. Because Balsar Galactica is fantasy, Spartacus is kind of fantasy. Um, I'll go Sons of Anarchy. Sons of Anarchy will be mine. Uh, Ramden writes again, I recall you covering the box office of Banu Bali, The Conclusion, uh, the Indian movie. I don't think I've heard your thoughts uh, on it ever. Did you watch it? And if so, what are your thoughts about Indian cinema in general? I don't have many thoughts on Indian cinema in general. I've only seen a few films, modern films, I should say. I've only seen a handful of modern films. One of the trappings of what I've been doing for the past 10 years is that my audience is 
the, you know, the popular wide release Hollywood film audience. That's my audience. That's why, even though I would work in like indie films here and there, like I always had shows where there was called indie spotlight or something else. I used to make those shows. Most of my stuff centered on that. And therefore a lot of my time is watching these movies. And I don't have a lot of time to watch, you know, Mexican film or Indian film or things like that. I don't have a lot of time for it. And so I just don't watch a lot of it. So I, what I am impressed with is the audience that it has. And I remember being, when I was with AMC theaters, like we were launching specific, uh, like Bollywood programs for that, which was great. And we were even considering when I was at AMC, starting a Bollywood show about Bollywood. I wasn't going to host it. I mean, I was going to go out and find somebody who's an expert on Bollywood films and have them host it. But I, I wasn't there at AMC long enough to bring that to fruition. So it never happened. So I don't really have an educated opinion um, in general that I can offer other than to say, I'm really impressed by the following it seems to have and continues to grow. And uh, I'm excited for the people who are involved in that stuff. Uh, ben Hayusa writes, uh, and I lost Ben. Where'd Ben go? Um, ben Hayusa writes, uh, how's it going, John? When will we get that first trailer uh, for the lion for the live action Lion King? So dying to see how it looks. Well, I don't think for a long time. Um, Lion King release. Let me just double check when, and I know it opens in 2019. Oh yeah. It's like, it's over a year. It's almost a year and a half away. So I don't anticipate seeing a trailer for the first Lion King probably for at least another six, seven, eight months. And that'll just be a teaser. I mean, we're a year and a half away from that movie coming out. So it's way too early for us to be talking about a trailer for that. Uh, ben also then writes, also just to ask, would there be an, uh, will there be an Eminem biopic? Mm, I doubt it. I, I doubt it. I don't think he's, I don't think he's that relevant anymore. It's funny. He just dropped a new album and Anne got his new album and it's actually pretty good. His most recent album is actually pretty good. So Anne and I were listening to it in one of our long drives. I was like, you know what? I kind of like this. This is pretty good, but I don't hear anybody else talking about it. So I don't know if we'll ever get one of those. Um, Let's see. Factual opinion. Silent Hill has to be the best video game movie. That movie shit. <laughs> Silent Hill's a big bag of shit. I hate that movie. I think it absolutely fucking sucks. Just sucks. But hey, subjectivity of film, man, just because I think it's bad doesn't mean you need to think about it. You clearly like it. And that's awesome. And I'll not try to talk you out of it. But you will never hear me say the words unless I'm repeating you. You will never hear me voluntarily just utter the phrase suddenly, Silent Hill's a good movie. No, I think it's a bag of shit. I think that movie is just wretchedly awful. Uh, but I'm glad you like it, and that's great. And I'm sure there are other people who like it too, by the way. Um, probably the best video game movie, and it's mediocre at best. Probably the best video game movie is probably the first Tomb Raider movie with uh, Angelina Jolie. And that's, like I said, mediocre at best. Then, of course, you got to talk about Mortal Kombat, but that's like awesome in a really cheesy, bad kind of way. But I love watching Mortal Kombat. Uh, Charles Harkins writes, King Ralph, great outdoors with Candy and Aykroyd and No Way Out, uh, MJ, Michael J. Fox and James Woods were your first three movies to watch as a kid. Were, were the first three movies to watch as a kid. What's yours? Oh, I don't know. I can't, I can't remember off the top of my head. All I remember is that the first movie, well, the first movie I ever saw was Star Wars. I mean, that's, my mom introduced me to Star Wars. That's my earliest childhood memory. Other than that, I remember that the first movie I went to the movie theaters without my parents for was a Kenny Rogers movie called Six Pack about Kenny Rogers, who is a NASCAR driver of some kind. And he ends up picking up these six orphan kids who are also great mechanics, and they end up being his pit crew. I know it sounds ridiculous, but I remember that was the first movie that as a kid, I went to go, I think, on my own without without my family, anybody in my family to go see a movie. It was called Six Pack. So there you go. Uh, ben Rayner writes, if I can uh, find where Ben is, there he is. Ben Rayner writes, um, gun confirmed root theory on Twitter today. Okay. Well, there you go. I mean, uh, yeah, there it is. So I, I've always, my assumption has always been that that wasn't actually Groot. It was a new Groot. So that seems to confirm that, uh, Chris Martin writes, have you seen 101 Dalmatians two patches 
London Adventure direct to video 2003 sequel. I am here to tell you, Chris, I have not. I can also tell you I have never even heard of it. So, no, I did not see 101 Dalmatians 2. Uh, Kellex writes, your thoughts on the Canadian classic Men with Brooms. I love the movie and can watch every few years. The greatest curling movie ever made. I don't remember it at all. I don't remember it all. Didn't that come out like the 90s? Hold on a second. Let me look this up now. Uh, Men with Brooms. Uh, let's see here. Oh, it came out in 2002. Um Oh, and it's with the guy, that dude who played the Mountie. I remember this now. Paul Gross, Molly Parker. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Now I remember the film. And I remember nothing about it. I remember seeing it, but I remember nothing about this film. Like, not a sweet thing do I remember about this film. So I cannot comment on it at all. Uh, Chris Martin also writes... What movies are you looking forward to in 2019? Me personally, live action Lion King, Dumbo. I'm not looking forward to Dumbo. Uh, Incredibles 2, uh, Toy Story 4, Wicked, and Episode 9, Star Wars. Um, hold on a second. I thought... Yeah, no, Incredibles 2 comes out this year. So, so good news. Uh, Incredibles 2 comes out this year. I was saying, wait, Incredibles 2. Incredibles 2 comes out this year. Um, I, I don't know. I'd have to sit down and look at a list of the films coming out in 2019. Obviously, Star Wars Episode Nine is one of the big ones. Obviously, Avengers 4 is going to be one of the big ones. Um, Shazam. I'm, I'm very curious about that. But, uh, but again, I would have to sit down and pull up a list of films to do that. So I can't really answer that. Um, Eli, the creative, writes, Perhaps Warner Brothers doesn't want to reboot for three reasons. One, Contracts, payouts, they don't have to worry about that, believe me. Uh, embarrassment of rebooting like Universal Studios. Uh, guess what? Sony rebooted Spider-Man and it worked out great. Other people have done reboots and it turned out great, so there's no embarrassment there. Three new actors afraid of working with WB in fear of being rebooted in DC. No, that's ridiculous. That's, that's, that's preposterous. That's not a real thing. So let's go through this. Number one, contract payouts. You don't have to pay out contracts. When you sign, whenever you hear about an actor having a five film deal, that only means the actor has to come in and play a role five times if the, if the studio calls on him to do it. It does not obligate the studio to use those actors. It doesn't obligate them at all. So, and believe me, the, the contract payouts are minuscule compared to the overall production budget of a movie like that. So just take that off the board. That's not a reason at all. Number two, embarrassment of rebooting. Take that off the table at all. Lots of people reboot all the time. You are far more concerned with making money, long-term success, than you are about momentary embarrassment. Sony rebooted Spider-Man twice. Marvel rebooted the Hulk. And look, it works out. Not always works out, but it can't work. Batman has been rebooted. I mean, look, it's just a thing. It's so, no, embarrassment, momentary embarrassment about rebooting, if it leads to longer-term success, is not a consideration. So that is not one of the things. And number three, new actors afraid of working with WB. No, actors are lining up to get jobs. Actors are lining up to work. Even the rich ones are lining up to get work, and they all want to be in big superhero films. It doesn't matter if it's for one superhero film or if it's for 10 superhero films. They all want to be in superhero films, and whether that lasts for five films or not. What you, why do you think actors take roles in one-shot movies? Well, wait a minute. I don't know. Like, did Joaquin Phoenix say, I don't know if I want to play Johnny Cash and walk the line. They might not make a sequel. No, it was a one film deal. So just believe me, none of those three reasons, Eli, have anything to do with it. I'm sure Warner Brothers has their reasons, but none of those three are have anything to do with it. I absolutely guarantee you. Um, John Guerrero writes, uh, any new developments with House of Cards? The last I heard... I, th I thought they were already shooting. The last I heard, they were moving ahead just without Kevin Spacey. So uh, that is the last thing I heard. That's the last thing I know. Other than that, I, I don't, I haven't heard any other developments other than that. Uh, Devonte Brown writes, surprise split was a hit. Uh, depends on a 15 year old movie to fully grasp. My audience called it trash at first. Then some were just confused after reveal. Um, 
I don't know. I, I think a lot of people under, like got the gist of the movie before the reveal. I don't think people had to know anything about Unbreakable to understand the movie was going. It's just that then the ending kind of gave you a whole new look on, the, on everything, much like the way that Sixth Sense, the ending of that, gave you a whole new perspective on the previous part of the movie. But I, I don't think it was all that difficult to follow along and get where they were going. At first, so I'll disagree with you on that one, uh, uh, Devontae. I'll disagree with you on that one. Uh, Jack Tatum writes, Hey, John, just want to clarify, I love Spielberg, but is it just me or does it feel like Spielberg hasn't done original, fun, blockbuster in a while? Thanks, and I love the show. Uh, no, he hasn't done blockbuster in a while, but I don't think he's... I think he's past the point of really caring about blockbuster. I think he's just at his point in his career. Look, he's Steven Spielberg. He's got all the Oscars. He's got, he's the greatest filmmaker of all time, in my opinion. I think he's just at a point now that he just wants to make the films that he wants to make. And, you know, he always wanted to do an Abraham Lincoln film, so he did it. He wanted to do the story about the Post. He thought it was timely and relevant, so he did it. None of these films were going to be blockbusters, but none of these preclude him from being the greatest director in the world. He just simply is. Um, so, yeah, I, he hasn't, but I don't know that we're ever going to see him, like, go out and do a big blockbuster again. I think to him, he's like, eh, let... Let the let those other kids who are cutting their teeth and learning how to be directors, let them direct those films. I'm going to do the stories I really want to tell. I just kind of feel like that's the place he's at in his career right now. Could be wrong. For all we know, next week we're going to find out he's directing a Star Wars movie or a, a, a new Justice League movie or something, maybe. But I just don't think we're going to see that out of him anymore. Uh, ben Robinson writes, uh, Rob Isson writes, I should say, uh, which do you like more, Godfather or Godfather 2? I get asked that question all the time. Uh, which do I prefer more, Godfather or The Godfather 2? And honestly, I go back and forth. Lately, I've been more on the God, the original Godfather train. There's certainly an argument to be made for Godfather 2. There are a lot of people out there who think The Godfather Part 2 is the greatest movie of all time. And I'm not going to disagree with them about that. But I go back and forth between the two. Again, lately though, I've kind of been on the, the original Godfather train. Uh, Kellex writes, I loved the Rocket Robin Hood cartoon as a kid. So did I, man. It was so bad and cheesy, but I ate it up. Uh, would we ever get a live action version of that instead of the traditional Robin Hood movie? Hard to say. I mean, Rocket Robin Hood, unless you were like a Canadian kid or something like that, I don't think very many people even know what it is. Like, I just don't think people know what Rocket Robin Hood is. And probably for very good reason. So for them doing something like that, look, the... The underlying mythology of Robin Hood, somebody who fights against the existing power for the benefit of the people, that is a theme we've seen in dozens, if not hundreds of movies. Will we get a version of that? I'm sure we will. But will we actually literally get a movie called Robin Hood in the year 3021? I, I don't know that that will happen. It, it, I would be up for it. I mean, I would go see it for sure, but I just don't think any studio is going to want to take a chance on that. Uh, Devante Brown writes, uh, thought the beast in split was just going to be a cannibalistic personality just for some realism sake before the reveal did split earn, um, supernatural before the reveal did split earn supernatural element. I'm not quite sure what you're saying there. Devante before reveal did split earn supernatural element. Um, are, are you saying that as if like a supernatural element has to be earned? I'm not really sure. I mean, that's one of the great things that made it such a great twist. Like even before the final reveal of the film with Bruce Willis, even before that, I thought that was a really great kind of twist because that's what a good twist does. You think one thing's going to happen and then something else comes out that you weren't expecting. And I thought that was one of the strengths of the movie. I thought that was one of the things that worked really well about it. Uh, Ram writes... Uh, don't you get headaches jumping from topic to topic? Appreciate your hard work, man. Love the show. It is a little difficult because here's one of the funny things is that doing these shows, and I think a lot of people don't appreciate that. My mind is always trying to think about 18 different things at once. Not to mention I'm trying to keep graphics running and having to check the audio, make sure the stream's still going, looking up information, all that, all while I'm talking, and I still got the last two topics in my head, and I'm trying to think ahead. That's why, like, when a topic like the question about three billboards comes up, and I brain freeze for a second on Sam Rockwell, right? Like, it's, it's, 
it's tricky. It's it's a little difficult uh, doing it from time to time, but if that's the price tag I got to pay for doing the show, then that's the price tag I pay for doing the show. All right, guys. Well, that's it. We've run out of topics for today. This has been fun. Thank you so much, guys, for joining me here today. Don't forget, the John Campius Show returns again tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's 11 a.m. on the East Coast time. Make sure you come and join me. Actually, I've got my friend, just for a little bit, i got my friend Jason Inman is going to be joining me on the show tomorrow. Make sure you stop in and join me for that. That will do it for me, guys. Thanks so much for joining me. My name's John Campia, and until the next video, bye bye <laughs>